What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we are finally looking at the Eagle Pilot Raider. The Eagle, definitely a ship giving the Defiant a run for its money when it comes to the title of Tough Little Ship. Let's go see why. Here it is, the Eagle class, otherwise known as the Tier 6 version of the old Aquarius class escort. Now, this is a very different beast from the old Aquarius because uh, not only is this a full pilot ship, but it also has a Lieutenant Commander command seat. Now, this ship can do a number of different things. The first of which I'm going to go over is a torpedo build. This thing was literally made to be a torpedo build. This thing was tailor-made for that sort of thing because, I mean, they literally said so on the live stream. That's what That was the mindset going in for this thing. More specifically, it's meant to be a sort of stealth torpedo bomber. Uh, it kind of—it's supposed to uh, cloak and sneak into uh, enemy ships and then just, you know, lay out kinetic damage all over the place. It'll do that with both, you know, your normal torpedoes as well as its console. This thing is, well, like I said, it's meant to be a stealth torpedo bomber console. You, uh, it puts you into a battle cloak. You attach a bunch of little bombs all over the place to enemy enemies, to any enemies nearby, and those bombs will destroy, will detonate and deal a bunch of kinetic damage. Plus, then there's the Starship trait on this thing, which is, again, this is um, tailor-made for a torpedo build because this will give you extra stacks of torpedo spread, too. Again, tailor-made for a torpedo build. So, that's why, for the most part on this ship, I went for just your average meta torpedo build. So, we've got the EBM, the Delphic Torpedo, the Neutronic Torpedo, and the Dark Matter Torpedo in the front, along with the Delphic Dual Beam Bank for the two-piece with the Delphic, because that's extra crit chance and crit severity. You can see that right there. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want to spend the low buy for these two items, you could go with the Quantum Phase Torpedo in its place, and then put the Discovery Dual Beam Bank over here to get the three-piece bonus with the Dark Matter set, which will give you that extra Dark Matter Torpedo. The core set is pretty much the same as most of my damage builds as well, except for the Warp Core. Here I am using the Revolutionary Warp Core because this gives a small buff to weapon amplification, so that gets a little bit more crit severity out of this. Otherwise, there's really not much else that will help a torpedo build in any sort of way. Um, I know this is event gear, so if you missed out on it, it is in Mud's Market now, and you know how I feel about Mud's Market. So uh, if you don't have this, uh, you could just go with the Discovery Warp Core from the Discovery Reputation. That will uh, give you the two-piece with the shield, and that will at least give you some nice amount of hull regeneration, which can be good for uh, survivability, which the ship is very lacking on. This thing is meant to put out a lot of damage, but it is squishy. It is meant to be hit fast and be fast, but it is, yeah, it's not meant to be uh, taking a lot of hits. Another big difference here is I am not using the Solid Tom Wave Impeller in the experimental weapon. I am using the one that came with this ship, the Subspace Death Charge, and that is because not only can this thing fire while you have your Enhanced Battle Cloak on, which this thing has, but this one also feeds off of your ex uh, auxiliary damage which is really nice because a lot of things, a lot of these other things are also going to feed into your ox power, like uh, Kemosite Lace Weaponry and some of the uh, exotic procs off of these torpedoes. Exotic damage is pretty important on a torpedo build. It's not as important as your kinetic damage, but it does play a big factor. So having something that's going to further feed into your ox power, not a bad idea. Another reason to go with this is because you don't want to use Solitaire Wave Impeller because you uh, want everything to be able to be firing while your Enhanced Battle Cloak is on, and Solitaire won't do that because it's not a projectile. Technically, this isn't either, but this will still fire while your Enhanced Battle Cloak is active. That is one of the special things about this experimental weapon. Okay, the uh, the large the large auxiliary batteries, those are here to feed into Phase Space Membrane that comes off the Grissom, very good for a torpedo build. Uh, definitely would recommend that. But if you don't have the face space, uh, face space membrane, I would just use the Kobayashi Maru transponder or, you know, whatever other devices you like. Now, another big difference here is that I am not using uh, two consoles that are normally a part of the torpedo meta, uh, and that is Ferrofluidic Assembly and the Ordnance Accelerator. The Ferrofluidic Assembly isn't here because that has been replaced with the Covert Warhead module, which comes off of this ship. Uh, basically, they were doing the same job. Both will lower the shared cooldown of your torpedoes, but the Covert Warhead module does a much better job of it, lowering the shared cooldown of your torpedoes to 0.5 seconds, as long as the ship it's equipped to has pilot maneuvers, which obviously this does. Additionally, this also has a pretty decent click ability, so really, there's no need for Ferrofluidic on this build at all, because this is just going to be doing the exact same job, but better. Now, the Ordnance Accelerator lowers the shared cooldown of your mine launchers, which again is a very important part of the torpedo meta normally, but I've only got the one mine here, so there's really no point in lowering its shared cooldown because there's going to be no shared cooldown to deal with because, you know, you can't share a cooldown with yourself. 
Oh, uh, speaking of the mines, uh, this one, I specifically went with the Tetrion Mine Launcher because, one, it's really easy to get. Uh, this is an episode reward. I am blanking on the name of the episode right now, but I'm sure someone will say it in the comments. That said, there are other options that you could go with, like there's the uh, the old Thoron infused mines, which you can get some extra radiation damage. There is the, the Black Ops mines. These are good for shield penetration, uh, but they are an event reward, so if you don't have them, they're in MUDs, which, again, MUDs. Eesh. Or there's the uh, Draenor Colony uh, mines, which these are nice because they can be re-engineered for radius, which will increase uh, the a the size of the AoE that their explosion creates. Uh, you know, these are a number of mines can be uh, re-engineered for radius, but these are one of the few that can be uh, get multiple stacks of radius. So uh, you can get the explosion to be increased by one and a half kilometers, which not bad, especially considering, uh, especially if you have like a gravity well, you can get everything clustered together, and then you're gonna be hitting that many more targets all at once. In the tactical consoles, I've got a bunch of vulnerability locators. I may have gone a little heavy with them because I've always said if I can keep my crit chance above 50%, I'm happy, which I have, but I could always go a little bit higher on the severity. Severity is always good to have as high as you possibly can get it. And uh, I, I don't know, I feel like I could trade out one or two of these for uh, an exploiter over a locator. The traits, um, actually, the torpedo build traits are not that different from my energy weapon build traits. Really, there are only like three differences. Uh, first is hot pursuit, which that just increases the chase distance for my mind, so they'll latch onto a target uh, much uh, from a better from a better distance than they normally would, making them a bit more effective. Which you know is nice, though not quite as essential on a ship like this because we've only got the one mine launcher. This is something I would be much more inclined to use on you know, like a 4-4 build, you know, like something like a big Dreadnought or something, uh, or, even, or really any cruiser uh, that's a command ship, because that way you're just going to be spitting out mines like crazy. But with this one, we're going to be pretty mine light. So yeah, I don't know how essential this one would be, but I wanted, I don't know, I still wanted to have it just to get a good amount of use out of the mines. The other two noticeable changes are resident payload modification. This is just a uh, debuff to physical and kinetic damage, and uh, it stacks, and this is a torpedo build that's going to be all kinetic damage, so this is good to have. And the other one is self-modulating fire, which this uh, every time you score a critical hit, you'll get some more shield penetration. Shield penetration is always good on a torpedo build. Okay, the starship traits. Uh, some of the essentials, um, I would say, uh, in Twine Tactical Matrices, definitely an essential for a torpedo build, because that's giving you some extra torpedo spreads, that's why uh, Fire at Will and Scatter Volley here, those are what is giving me the extra torpedo spread ones. There's also uh, uh, subspatial warheads that gives um, these subspatial tears every time you use high yield can be really nice for generating some, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say spread damage, but it is good for being able to hit multiple targets at once. Rapid emitting armaments is also really nice to have, it just fires three big plasma torpedoes at an enemy anytime you activate a tractor beam. Uh, a bit more expensive because this does come off of the legendary Dideridex, but if you can afford that, definitely a good trait to have for a torpedo build. And frankly, the Legendary Warbird Bundle is just a ton of fun, so even if you don't like torpedo builds all that much, that's still a good get. Now, the last Starship trait to talk about is Stealth Torpedo Bomber, which is the one that comes off of this ship. And the really cool thing about this thing is that it basically does the same thing as Entwine Tactical Matrices does. We're basically using this for the same purpose of extra torpedo spreads. The really nice thing is that they don't interfere with each other. They will they'll stack with each other and you don't have to worry about them overriding each other. How Stealth Torpedo Bomber works is you gain stacks of the trait uh, for every second that you are cloaked or for every time you use one of your pilot maneuvers. This is why, uh, this is one of the other reasons why you're going to want to keep your Enhanced Battle Cloak active the whole time you are in combat, and that's why you want to have weapons that will fire while your Enhanced Battle Cloak is active. That means all projectiles, along with the Subspace Death Charge, because, you know, it, it's not a projectile, but it will function like one. Torpedo builds hit hard and they hit heavy, and this one hits very fast because, well, it's a pilot ship. That's kind of the whole theme behind it. It is meant to be fast, deadly, but very squishy. So you got to be careful with this thing when you're when you're uh, when you're fighting because <laughs> you're not going to be able to take a lot of damage. And especially with that enhanced battle cloak active, because not only are you going to be squishy, but you're not going to have any shields because your cloak is active. So. You're going to want to be careful there. Now, I know not everyone cares about torpedo builds. I've certainly learned that from all the times I have uploaded torpedo builds and a bunch of people started screaming at me in the comments about how they don't like torpedo builds or how they don't care about the meta. So, you know, those are always fun to read. But let's take a look at some of the other things that this ship can do besides a torpedo build, because it can do more than just that. 
This is a pilot ship, which means not only will it have pilot maneuvers, but it will also have a full commander level pilot seat, which means it can use reroute reserves to weapons. This is the firing mode for this specialization, and what it does is give you a crap ton of haste for your weapons. Like, a lot of haste. It's kind of insane. The drawback is that it will also drain power from your engine power, so you're gonna want to uh, make sure you can keep that up, because if your engine power reaches zero, this power will end, which uh, you don't want that. You also don't want to have your auxiliary power maxed out on a, an energy weapon build. Remember, folks, your power levels do not save with your loadouts. So you're gonna have to save those through uh, these things instead. Just like Surgical Strikes, reroute reserves to weapons will buff both your cannons and your beams. They will not discriminate between your energy weapons, so you'll be able to mix both of those if you'd like. And in some cases, uh, that's actually preferred, because really you just want to get the most powerful things that you can get your hands on, whether they are beams or cannons. Which is why my weapons loadout here looks pretty much the same as what my Surgical Strikes uh, build looked like over on the Hydra. For the experimental weapon, again, I am not using Solitaire Wave Impeller because Solitaire Wave Impeller's power relies on your engine power, and uh, reroute reserves to weapons will drain your engine power. So instead, I decided to use Mjolnir off of the, um, the T6 Norway. I picked this because it has a reasonable cooldown, but also because it has a small AoE, so it's going to be able to hit multiple enemies at the same time, which does make it kind of nice as an experimental weapon. That's the same reason why Voice of the Prophets was popular back in the day, before Solitan came out. It was able to uh, hit multiple enemies at once because of its small AoE, and this is kind of a similar idea, but this is easier to get because it's off a sea, uh, sea starship. Though, that said, uh, during my testing of this build, I noticed the... Uh, the power draw from your engines really isn't all that bad and probably and isn't that difficult to combat against, especially on an engineer because, uh, you know, EPS power transfer, always nice to have. But um, frankly, I probably could have gone, gotten away with still using Solitaire Wave Impeller because, you know, like I said, engine power is still pretty high. All you, all you really need to do to keep that up is uh, just a uh, emergency power to engines. But yeah, beyond that, the consoles are pretty standard for pretty much any of my energy weapon builds. Uh, you want to focus on bonus damage and uh, haste, crit chance, and severity, you know, all that stuff. It's the same story with the personal traits and starship traits. A lot of these are pretty much the same to most of my other energy weapon builds. You're just modifying it for reroute reserves to weapons, which really the only significant tra uh, change would be the uh, extension trait, which in this case is Vanguard Specialists. There is one difference here than I normally do on a lot of my energy weapons, and that is the inclusion of Fresh from r and and that is because I am also using the Starship trait Synthetic Good Fortune. Synthetic Good Fortune is really nice for uh, building up a nice amount of crit chance, and I am doing that by using uh, two seats of Pilot Team. Now, it's probably a little unnecessary because I've actually got four different pilot abilities on this, and that is how... Uh, Synthetic Good Fortune is triggered by using pilot abilities or by using uh, control abilities, which I've also got a good amount of on this build. But the way I saw it, the more you have of them, the faster you're going to build up that crit chance, so I really didn't see it as a downside. So I am using uh, the trick of using Fresh from r, r to decrease the shared cooldown of the two pilot teams, so I'll be able to spam those uh, together that much more quickly, and thus building up that crit chance. Before moving on, there is one thing I wanted to talk about, and that was chemocyte lace weaponry. Uh, I was talking about—I was actually talking about this earlier tonight with uh, with a few people, uh, mainly Mad Dog Mikey and uh, Pirate Scum Gaming, uh, and we were talking about how uh, chemocyte lace weaponry two is actually probably going to be better here rather than chemocyte lace weaponry one. Normally, we use chemocyte one just because there's really not a lot of good things to put inside uh, the ensign level tactical abilities, so chemocyte lace one tends to be the most popular choice, despite the fact that. Really, you could get more power out of it. Chemocyte isn't going to do that much on, say, a beam overload build because, you know, your uh, firing rate is so low on a beam overload build. But with uh, reroute reserves to weapons, your firing rate is extremely high. Chemocyte normally only has a small chance to trigger off of an energy weapon, but with your haste so high, you're going to have a lot of those small chances. So your Chemocyte is going to function much better under uh, reroute reserves to weapons than it would, say, beam overload. So that's why with this, uh, I've been playing around with the, uh, using Chemocyte Lace Weaponry 2. May even try out uh, Chemocyte 3, just, you know, for the heck of it. But for now, I'm just sticking with 2, because I think Beta 2 will do better because of its debuff. I'm actually trying this out on the next build you're going to see as well. Okay, the last thing I threw on here was a Cannon Scatter Volley build, and that's just because um, I can. The, the ship gives Cannon Ship uh, vibes to me. You know, it's meant to be like a sort of pocket defiant that fits in the uh, the aft end of, a, of an Odyssey class, and, you know, defiant always screams cannons to me, so I feel like um, the Aquarius and the Eagle by extension 
also have a cannon boat vibe to me as well. That said, you could just as easily put Beam Overload on this thing too. It really was just uh, a difference of where you put the uh, the abilities. But yeah, with uh, Cannon Scatter Volley, uh, again, just throw all cannons on there and uh, make sure you're using uh, Withering Barrage instead of Vanguard Specialist. And then otherwise it is virtually the same. It would be the same with Beam Overload. Just switch everything out for beams and then use Super Weapon Ingenuity instead of uh, Withering Barrage. Oh, and uh, also swap in superior beam training over uh, rather than superior cannon training. Actually, one thing I probably could have done is uh, because this has a command seat, I could have put in a uh, suppression barrage in here, which would be good for debuffing your enemies, uh, particularly their damage output. Because remember, I said this thing is very squishy, so being able to lower the damage output of your enemies, that would actually be uh, a really valuable thing to have. And uh, suppression barrage is really effective with uh, scatter volley and or uh, fire at will because you're hitting multiple targets at once, whereas uh, with uh, reroute reserves to weapons or beam overload or um, rapid fire, you're only getting one target at a time, so suppression barrage isn't going to be nearly as effective on something like that. The downside to that is that I would have to sacrifice a bit on some of my other tactical abilities, because suppression barrage is a lieutenant commander ability, well suppression barrage 1 is, so that's the only one I'm going to be able to get into this lieutenant commander command seat. So I would have to bump down Attack Pattern Beta, and probably Chemocyte as well, and maybe even move Torp Spread to another seat, meaning I would have to sacrifice on either uh, Emergency Power to Engines, or one of my uh, uh, Unconventional Systems Triggers. Not something I'm probably going to do, because I am a min-maxing weirdo, and I don't want to sacrifice on my damage output, but at the same time, uh, for people who want, who want more survivability out of this ship, uh, Suppression Barrage would definitely be a good addition if you're going to be using Scatter Volley on this thing. So yeah, that is a look at some of the things that the Eagle Pilot Raider is capable of doing. If you like torpedo builds, and if you like small, nimble escorts, this is definitely a ship to pick up, because honestly, there really isn't anything else like it in the game. There are plenty of pilot ships, and there are plenty of uh, ships for torpedo builds, but there aren't many that are quite like this one. Probably the closest ones in comparison I can think of would be uh, the Tamer Alliance Raider or um, the Legendary Talis. And neither of those are pilot ships, so this one is still very much uh, in its own classification. Let me know what you guys think of the Eagle down below uh, in the comment section. I know the Hydra is definitely more of the fan favorite of this anniversary bundle, but this is still a really cool ship, and I'm curious to see what you guys think of it as well. While you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Uh, if you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member or hit the, the, um, the what's it called? The super thanks button or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. Oh, speaking of the merch store, I released a new shirt in there. The Ship Smasher Pass shirt. This is by far the funniest thing I have released to the merch store and uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm so proud of it. It's, it's, it just makes me laugh.